In 1868, Phillips Brooks and Louis H. Redner penned the famous Christian hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Brooks was born in Boston, the son of a merchant. He was a large man for his time, standing a tall six feet six inches. He became an Episcopal deacon in 1859 at the Church of the Advent in Philadelphia. He served as rector of the Holy Trinity Parish in Philadelphia from 1862 to 1869. He gained national prominence for his preaching ability. In 1880, he became the first American to preach before a member of the English royal family, Queen Victoria. Brooks was also an abolitionist and supported the Union cause during the Civil War. Three years after an inspirational trip to the Holy Land in 1865, he said the memory was still singing in my soul, and he wrote the words to O Little Town of Bethlehem in 1868 for his Sunday school class of 36 kids to sing at a program. As with Silent Night, the music for this hymn was composed within 24 hours of when it was first sung at a, at a church program. The words and tune were hastily printed on leaflets and sung on Christmas morning by six Sunday school teachers and 36 children. Redner always insisted that the melody, which came to him during the night before the program, was a gift from heaven. Father Joseph Moore was inspired to write Silent Night 
holy night, after he was called out into the snow to bless a newly born baby in the home of one of his poorest parishioners. He was so filled with the spirit of the season and with the simple beauty of the mother and infant that when he returned to his study, he wrote the poem we sing today. Joseph Moore was born in Salzburg, Austria, the son of a musketeer, Joseph Moore, and seamstress, Anna Schulbrin. Ordained a Catholic priest in 1815, and having served several parishes around Salzburg, in 1816, when Moore wrote the German words to Stille Nacht, he was serving as a priest in a pilgrimage church in Mariapfar, Austria. It had been thought that Moore wrote the song in 1818, but in 1995, an original manuscript was discovered dated 1816 and is the only known existing manuscript signed by Moore in his own handwriting. On Christmas Eve 1818, in the village of Oberndorf in the Austrian Alps, Moore asked Franz Gruber, the village schoolmaster and organist, to set his poem to suitable music for two solo voices, chorus and guitar accompaniment. The guitar accompaniment was needed because the church organ had broken down. Within a few hours, Gruber composed the simple melody that generations have loved ever since, and the song was sung that same evening in the St. Nicholas Church, where Moore served as assistant priest from August 1817 to October 1819. Franz Gruber the third son of a linen weaver, was born in Unterweisberg, near Hochberg, Austria. He was a school teacher at Arnsdorf from 1807 to 1829, and starting in 1816, he supplemented his income by being the organist at St. Nicholas Church. The last 30 years of his life, he served as choir master in Hallein, Gruber wrote over 90 musical compositions, but is best remembered as the composer for Stille Nacht. The song might never have traveled beyond the village where it was written, except that the organ repairman, Karl Maurer, obtained a copy of the hymn and repeated it to others throughout the region, but without mention of the composer.
O Come All Ye Faithful is the carol to end all Christmas concerts. Its rousing melody attributed to a number of composers over the years, including Handel and Bach, is generally credited to John Francis Wade. Printed in 1751, the text was originally written in Latin as Adeste Fidelis, a title you'll still sometimes see printed on Christmas albums. But the English translation, written by the English Catholic priest Frederick Oakley in 1841, is the most commonly used version. Wade's hymn is a simple carol that tells the story of baby Jesus. Its joyous lyrics, sing all ye citizens of heaven above, invite us to join the angels in celebrating the Christ child's birth. The French carol Les Anges dans nos campagnes, now known as Angels We Have Heard on High, is completely anonymous. It has always been printed with no known lyricist or composer. The beautiful carol tells the story of Christ's birth when the angel choir told the good news to nearby shepherds. The chorus Gloria in excelsis Deo 
reflects the chorus of the angel choir that long ago Christmas night. Many years ago, shepherds in the hills of southern France had a Christmas Eve custom of calling to one another, singing Gloria in Excelsis Deo, each from his own hillside. The traditional tune that the shepherds used may have been from a late medieval Latin chorale. It became the magnificent chorus of angels we have heard on high. It came upon the midnight clear. One of the most beloved carols of the English-speaking world was composed by a native of Sandusfield, Massachusetts. Edmund Sears grew up in the foothills to the Berkshires and worked in the legal profession in Sandusfield until he felt called to parish ministry. Ordained as a Unitarian clergyman, Sears left our area to serve congregations closer to Boston. Overworked in a large church in Lancaster, Sears' health broke. However, refusing to abandon ministry completely, he semi-retired to a smaller congregation in Wayland, where he composed the words to It Came Upon the Midnight Clear in 1849. Sears was troubled by a world at war. Europe endured a cascading succession of failed revolutions in France, Italy, Germany, and Austria, in 1848. Closer to home, the United States and Mexico had crossed swords from 1846 to 1848. The Mexican-American War influenced a young Abraham Lincoln to go into politics. That same war inspired Sears to write his carol, calling upon the angels to bring a war-weary humanity back to its senses.
Although no Christmas season would be complete without the melodious singing of this tuneful carol, very little is known about its origin. It is believed to have had its rise in France during the 15th century. Noel is a French word originating from the Latin meaning birthday. The song is thought to have been brought across the channel to England before 1823 by the wandering troubadours. The carol under the English form, Noel, spelled N-O-W-E-L-L, became a great favorite for Christmas Eve, especially in the west of England. This was when the entire village gathered for singing and celebrating at the bringing, of, bringing in of the Yule log. At this time, carols were thought of as a popular religious song meant to be sung outside the church rather than within. The first Noel portrays in vivid narrative style the story of the birth of Christ. All six stanzas are needed to complete the entire event when the hymn is sung. The sixth stanza urges us to join together to sing praises to God for the marvels of his creation. The repetition of the joyous Noel in the refrain is equivalent to our singing out happy birthday to someone. This time of year can be especially busy for many people, and it can be easy for us to forget the true meaning of Christmas. In the spirit of the story of Christmas, let's take a moment and listen to a Christmas tale that invites us to take a closer look at the wise men Mary and Joseph and Christ himself, so that we may gain a deeper understanding of the rich messages the Nativity is telling us. is one of the best-known French Christmas songs, along with Angels We Have Heard on High. This French hymn was originally titled Cantique de Noël. The text was by part-time poet Placide Capot 
in 1847. Capot was a commissionaire of wines by profession and an occasional writer of poetry by avocation. Capot was able to present his verse to Adolf Adam by means of having a mutual acquaintance with a family from Paris by the name of Laurie. This song is most often credited to Adolf Adam in music books, and Capot is hardly ever mentioned as being the writer of this wonderful text. Adolf Charles Adam composed this music. Adolf Adam was born in Paris and was primarily a French operatic composer. He wrote 39 operas, 14 ballads, and a total of 80 stage works, besides managing a theater and being a professor at the Paris Conservatory. Adam's composition was first performed at the 1847 Christmas Eve Midnight Mass in the Church of Roquemur, France. Church authorities frowned on the song and one French bishop denounced it for its lack of musical taste and total absence of the spirit of religion. Today, O Holy Night is noted for its beautiful words and melody, and it is one of the most popular songs for singing as a solo at Christmas. Isaac Watts was born in Southampton, England, the oldest of nine children. He was small in stature, standing a mere five feet tall, considered the father of modern English hymnody. He was the first Englishman to succeed overcoming the prejudices that opposed the introduction of hymns into English public worship. Joy to the World was included in Watts' well-known hymnal of 1719, Psalms of David, imitated in the language of the New Testament. A translation of the last five verses of Psalm 98 was used as a scripture reference for this hymn, and Watts first titled his text, The Messiah's Coming and Kingdom. In all, Isaac Watts wrote approximately 600 hymns in his lifetime. Watts and Handel lived in London during the same time period and evidently knew each other. Handel has been credited with composing the music for this hymn. However, there is no proof that Handel had anything to do with the composition of Joy to the World. The actual composition credit should go to music educator Lowell Mason. It was Mason who created the confusion over the composition by including the phrase from George Friedrich Handel's Messiah because he used a couple excerpts from Handel's Messiah when he set it to the music. In particular, Comfort ye my people, and glory to God. Lowell Mason was born in Medsfield, Massachusetts, and published more than 40 collections of sacred music and wrote or arranged more than 1,500 hymn tunes. His music career began in 1822 with the publication of his first hymn collection.
May the love of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us and in our homes and with our loved ones now and forevermore. Amen.